James, you on the phone? I'm here, Tim. How are you, James? I'm doing fantastic, and you? Good. James Scholes is here, who's the education policy analyst at the Show Me Institute. And let's, as we always do on Tuesdays, we visit with the folks from the Show Me Institute. But I always like to kind of set the ground rules or the, the table, if you will, set the table with what is Show Me Institute? So the Show Me Institute is a, a free market think tank. We, we write on a number of different issues, but we try to educate the public about, about policies in Missouri from a free market perspective. And there's no sides. You try not to take sides. Well, we, we try to educate the public. Like I said, we do have a, we are a free market. We believe that, that in limited government, we believe in, in giving power back to the people and putting, uh, putting the ability in their hands to, uh, to direct their lives rather than in the government's hands. Because so an educated, an educated, uh, uh, why does Rush Limbaugh say? Uh, the uh, low educated voter uh, and the high educated voter. We're, it's a more important, in my view, that we start having more people who, have, who are educated on issues. And you can make your own decision. I'm not telling you how to vote one way or the other, but it's important to be educated on issues, and particularly when it comes to free market. Absolutely, and as, as you'll see in the or as you're, you'll, they'll hear in the discussion today, the the opposite side is a is well funded, and they they try to educate people to their side of the position. And so what we try to do is is provide another side to the argument, and and help educate voters on on, on various issues. All right, so James Scholes is here, who is the education policy analyst with the Show Me Institute. Now, what I'm going to read is a letter to the editor. May I read it, James? Sure. All right, this is a letter to the editor, and this is in a number of newspapers across the state, and James wrote it. What's it about, James? It's about taxes and uh, the, how your tax dollars are being used to keep your taxes high. <laughs> Say that one more time. It's, it's how your tax dollars are being used to keep your taxes high. How your tax dollars are being used to keep your taxes high. Whew. That's, that's, I had to think through that three times. My head is thick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's is a letter to the editor, and James Schulz wrote it, who is the education policy analyst with the Show Me Institute. In 2006, I had my first and only foray into a political race. I ran for a spot on the Nixa school board against two incumbents and lost. In hindsight, I'm glad I lost because I would have had to join the Missouri School Boards Association, an organization that has taken positions that are fundamentally opposed to my beliefs. For example, Missouri School Boards Association consistently fights to keep our taxes high. During the last Missouri legislative session, Missouri School Boards Association was an effective advocate for defeating House Bill 253, a bill that would have resulted in the first income tax cut for Missourians in decades. Now the Missouri School Boards Association is gearing up to fight tax cuts in the legislature again in the next session. In their own words, in, the, in their own words, Missouri School Boards Association, the battle continues. To educate their members, the Missouri School Board Association is hosting 15 anti-tax cut meetings in various regions of the state. I asked Brent Gann, the Missouri School Board Association's chief communications officer, if they, in fact, invited anyone in support of the tax cuts. They had not. The organization is not interested in a debate or a discussion. Their position is set. They will not support tax cuts that reduce state revenue. Now, HB 253 was not a perfect bill, but the Missouri School Board Association's position on tax cuts essentially means they will only support bills that maintain or grow the size of government. Yes, I am glad I lost the election and never became a member of the Missouri School Boards Association. Unfortunately, my tax dollars still flow 
to the Missouri School Boards Association through my local school district's membership dues. It is frustrating that our tax dollars go to the association to, in order to fund their efforts to keep our taxes high. What a letter. Uh, and if you might comment, James, on the fact, uh, though, first of all, that you lost the election and you're thinking back, well, yeah, yeah I'm glad I lost the election because you didn't have to become a member of a political organization. Right. I mean, the Missouri School Boards Association provides a lot of valuable services to schools. They help them find superintendents and do all kinds of things to help educate their superintendents. They also take political stances. And, and this is one instance where they take a political stance that is in opposition to what I believe. And if I would have been on the school board, I would have had to be part of a, an organization that was fighting to keep our taxes high. And like I said, that's something I'm fundamentally opposed to. And in hindsight, glad I didn't end up on the school board and a member of the school board's association. And it's a little bit of an unfair fight. And here you mentioned 15 anti-tax cut meetings. But they also, you know, during this debate over House Bill 253, which, by the way, there was a watermark that we kept pointing out so that schools would not lose funding. And inside of the bill, there was a watermark. But nonetheless, it's a little bit of an unfair fight because, well, you know, they are working towards keeping House Bill 253 down by offering informational leaflets, if you will, mm -hmm. by, by school superintendents going to school boards and asking uh, for them to endorse the governor's position. I mean, so you're not allowed to do that. Uh, Show Me Institute or other right. organizations are not allowed to do that. Right. We, we are not allowed to lobby. We couldn't, when our, on 253, we couldn't say, you should contact your legislator or you should support this. We tried to educate people. But the Missouri School Boards Association has direct lobbyists in Jefferson City. They engage in grassroots lobby, lobbying where they try to organize people. They hold these meetings with uh, school board members. And, you know, school board members are the largest elected body in Missouri. And there, there are school board members in, in every community, and so they're educating the school board members. They're then influencing the school board meetings and the, and the resolutions from the school boards. Uh, so they are well organized, and they're, they're taking a, a very firm stance that they are not going to support any tax cut that, that reduces state revenue. So like I said in, in the letter, their, their position is that they only want to see a government maintain its size or grow. You know, and I, and I asked another question uh, to Brent Gann from uh, Missouri School Boards Association. I said, well, have you ever looked at other programs where the government might be wasting money and suggested that they make cuts in other areas? And they had not. So, so they're not interested in, in improving or making government more efficient. They're simply interested in getting more money. Uh, and keeping and growing the size of government. And how is the Missouri School Boards Association, how is that funded? It's through membership dues. So school districts pay membership dues to the organization. So Springfield pays about $13,000 in membership dues. And the other area school districts, Nixa Republic, pay around $8,000 to the school boards association. And that's through taxes. Right. That's your tax dollars going to, to support your local school, who then pay membership dues to an organization that's fighting to keep your taxes high. You know, and this is just one example of government agencies, or, or this isn't really a government agency, but it's your tax dollars flowing to something that's, uh, to an organization that's lobbying to keep your taxes high. Let me get you know, this we've straight. Written about, uh, we've written about government lobbying government uh, before at Show Me Institute on our blog, and you can find uh, op-eds about that very topic, but it's, it's a bit disturbing that when you know that your tax dollars are going to organizations to help lobby the government to take more of your tax dollars. <laughs> Let me get it straight in my head. I pay taxes. The school district for whom I pay the taxes then belongs to an organization like the Missouri School Boards Association. And, and so by paying the taxes goes into their revenues and their revenues support lobby efforts to keep my taxes high. That's absolutely right. <laughs> I mean, it's unreal. And, it, and it, how, why is it that the general public, we don't even, we're not outraged by this? Well, that, that was my question. You, I saw this news story that, that about these Missouri School Board Association meetings, and it said the battle continues. And, and it was, that really struck me, that they see this as a, as a battle. 
and they are fighting. They're actively fighting. You know, you don't say you're in a battle if you're not fighting. Uh, so they're actively fighting. They're waging war against tax cuts. And that really stood out to me. That, that Here's an organization that's supposed to be a resource for school districts. It's supposed to be a resource to our school board members to help them effectively lead their school district. And they're engaged in a battle to, to keep us from cutting taxes. That should be outrageous to people. It should be. We should be in the streets. <laughs> and, and we're watching The Voice tonight to see who's <laughs> going to get cut. All right, uh, more with James Scholes, who's the Education Policy Analyst with the Show Me Institute. And we'll take your phone calls, 862-9977, 1-800-375-0056. Morning Line on AM560, KWTO. Morning Line, 862-9977 and 1-800-375-0056. Visiting with the Show Me Institute's James Scholes, who is the Education Policy Analyst. James, now the legislature reconvenes in January. Where's this going? I mean, kind of help us through what to expect over the next six months. It's very likely that there will be another effort to cut taxes in the next legislative session. You know, I don't know what the bill is going to look like, but I'm, I'm pretty confident that something will go forward. I mean, that's exactly why the Missouri School Boards Association is gearing up now. They, they see that the, the tax battle continues, and so they're prepping for the upcoming war in the legislative session. Yeah, they say the battle continues. You know, why is it, I guess it's because of the jobs and the unions, and I mean, I can't speak for them, but it's, I guess it's the status quo. There is so much fear of changing education and the way it operates so that it might save a taxpayer a dime or two and allow a change which might lead to more quality education. Right. Well, I mean, anyone who's in charge of a, a monopoly wants to keep the monopoly, right? So the school boards association and, and, and public school districts, by and large, have a monopoly on education. So what they have here is that they have a lot of influence, a lot of say. They're trying to keep steady funding for, for education to grow and increase funding for education. And they, and they do also take positions to try to stifle choice and competition. They, they take stances against school choice programs. Uh, like charter schools, they, they want to limit the growth of charter schools or stop students from using dollars to attend private schools. So their, their job is to protect the status quo. They want to protect the school system as it is, and that's one of the reasons they take this stance on tax cuts. It sounds like closed-mindedness. You, I can say that, and you can't. <laughs> it, but it sounds like closed-mindedness about change, and it seems like there's no interest at all at the taxpayers' uh, interest, that you know, maybe we're paying, we're we're there's so much revenue on the st from the state budget that goes to education, and they're trying to preserve that, even though there was a watermark on that House Bill 253 that said if you don't get your funding, then the the, the tax cuts won't happen, won't go into effect. But that's never said in the debate. That's never brought up, is it, James? No, and I, I always bring this up. I like to give people a little thought experience, uh, experiment. You know, we spend about $10,000 per kid. And if you have a classroom of, of 20 students, that's $200,000 for that classroom of students. Where does the money go? Because, you know, we, uh, teachers may, maybe make forty to $50,000 somewhere in that neighborhood. So you have $150,000. Where does it go? Well, now, you know, part of it goes to, to help lobby the government to get more of your money. Uh -huh. so, so that's where part of the money goes. And, you know, if you, if you go to our website, the showmeinstitute.org, we have another site called showmesunshine.org. And we have there uh, a searchable uh, government lobbying contract. So like I said, we did a little research and found that government agencies like school districts or cities of, of the city of Springfield often pay lobbyists to go to Jefferson City and lobby on their behalf. To so, keep the taxes high. Right. Well, th that's one thing they try to do. So th this isn't an isolated instance, uh, you know, an isolated example. There, there are many examples of this happening where government is lobbying government to keep your taxes high. Now, these 15 anti-tax cut meetings uh, that you mentioned in your letter, uh, those are going on. And you mentioned that they haven't invited anyone to speak in favor of tax cuts. Uh, would you encourage, and I certainly would, the general public to go to these meetings and speak up? 
Well, I, I don't even know if they're open to the general public or if they're just trying to, to recruit their school board members. Uh, you know, if, if they're open, uh, I would certainly suggest that people go. They're, I don't, they're, they're coming to a conclusion now. Most of them are wrapping up. Uh, but, you know, I know that there are school board members who, are, who believe in limited government, who are conservatives, and they, they need to, to start engaging that organization uh, and engaging them on, on issues. And, and individual citizens need to pay attention to the stances that the school board's association takes or the, the different uh, organizations that represent them and start getting engaged and understanding the position that these organizations take. Well, how about this idea, James? This is thinking out of the box. Run for the school board. Absolutely. Well, <laughs> run, run for the school board and, uh, and hold on to your principles. Hold on to your values if you, if you do get elected. Uh, and if you face the same fate as me, uh, don't, don't run away as I did, but hang in there and do it again. Well, just, just <laughs> think how if you would have won that race... For the Nixa school board, just think how your life would be different. You could have got season tickets to the Nixa high school football games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely right. And you know, and I, I might have accidentally drank the Kool Aid. So that's one of the reasons I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> yeah. uh, I might have drank the school board's association Kool Aid. So that's I'm great. glad I didn't get elected. But All right, you know, and this is nothing against Nixa. I have I have great respect for for the Nixa school district. Uh -huh. uh, but this is you know, an example of how the school board's association is doing something that taxpayers need to know about that's great all right show me institute.org show me institute.org is your letter on the website uh, it will be on the website and it, it should be running in the nix express pretty soon as well all right show me institute.org and you can learn all about this and many other issues that have to do with free markets and or you can telephone the show me institute and here's the phone number 314-454-0647 314-454-0647 Four five four zero six four seven. James, great discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. James Scholes from the Show Me Institute. I tell you, go to that website. You'll learn a lot.